Hey there guys, it's Rick Hughes here with Airgun Web and our deep dive series into the BSA line of air guns. Today we're gonna to talk about how to get air into your PCP. Okay, so before I get started, I just wanna say real quickly, we got some construction going on. So if you hear some noise, you hear some generator kick on, I apologize for that. It is construction time here at Airgun Web Studios. So let's jump right into it. You got your brand new PCP air gun, or maybe you're looking at all the different air guns out there on the market and you don't know what they get and you're confused. Well, let's start there first actually, because you have multi-pumps, you have CO2, you have brake barrels or springers, gas ram guns, and then you've got PCP guns, which is the right gun for you? Well, you know, on a budget, gosh, there's nothing better than a really good springer. You get the most power with the least amount of dollars. That's cool, but on the other side, they can be tricky to shoot accurately, at least get repeatable accuracy out of them. So you go to multi-pump, super easy to shoot, very, very affordable, but sometimes the accuracy isn't there and it certainly doesn't have the power of some of the other options. Or maybe you like CO2, they have some great CO2 rifles and pistols on the market, you get multi-shot, all these things, but then you're dealing with CO2 and its issues and it doesn't get a lot of power. So that really comes back around to PCP. Now, the downside to PCP is you gotta get high pressure air into the gun. And a lot of people that I've talked to, they'll go out, they buy their PCP, and then they'll say, Rick, can I use my shop compressor? You know, I've got this really expensive screw drive, you know, automotive compressor, can I use that to fill my air gun? And I gotta tell them, no, you can't, because that may do up to 200 PSI, let's just say. This needs, this particular gun needs about 3,400 PSI, so big difference there. How do you get 3,400 PSI into this? Well, if you've been into air guns for a long time, this video may be a little bit kind of redundant, but if you're new to air guns, this is really important, so stay with me here. Now, I've got videos of all the different products up here already, so I'm really not gonna kind of demo all that today. Uh, maybe it will put some links down in the description, so if you wanna go learn about the hand pump or the Daystate compressor or the trail charger, the links will be in the description. Go find those and you can actually watch those videos just on those products. But I really wanna focus on just the different means to fill your PCP and some of the pluses and minuses of those options. All right, so the first thing you have is a hand pump. That hand pump is made by Hill out of the UK and it's awesome. It is pricey, it's a little under $300, but what it delivers is a really, really reliable air source for your air gun. Now to pump this up, it's gonna take some work, not nearly as much work with this tiny little cylinder as say it would with this big bottle, but it's still gonna be some work, especially when you get over 3000 PSI. It takes a lot of force to squeeze that air into that cylinder at that pressure. So what's the trick? Well, it helps if you got a little weight on you. So if you're 200 plus pounds, a hand pump is a good option. You just sort of lean on it and you can put air in your gun. If you're under 200, you actually may have some problems getting up to that pressure. It's not about how strong you are, it's literally the amount of mass you have to compress that pump and make air go in that little cylinder. Just the way it goes, take my word for it. If you're over 200, hand pump's a great option. However, hand pumps have a small bit of a shortcoming. Now, that actually has a desiccant pack on it, as you can see. That is great, man, you get dry air, or do you? Really, you need to dry the air on the output side, not the input side. That kind of does something with the air going in, but really, you're gonna get the most of your moisture when that air is hot and pressurized, and then when it condenses, that's when it leaves moisture in your gun. So, humid environments, hand pumps, not really gonna be your best friend for the long term, great in a pinch, but may not be what you wanna do all the time, um, at least not for the health of your gun. So let's move on. Let's say you're gonna to go to the next level. Well, a lot of people go with a little bottle and this is a little, I think this is a 90 or 100 cubic inch bottle here. This is great, 4,500 PSI. Before you buy a bottle though, make sure that somewhere in your area can actually fill this because not everybody will or not everybody can. So make sure you can get this filled to about 4,500 PSI. And then you're gonna get a lot of use out of this, especially in a gun like this. It's a tiny little cylinder that's 3,400 PSI, this is a much larger bottle, extra pressure, you're gonna to top this off a whole lot of times and get a lot of shooting out of a little bottle like this. Um, but again, not everybody will fill it. Uh, so that's kind of an issue, you gotta make sure that you have that nut cracked before you buy your bottle. And this is three, 400 bucks, 
and maybe you buy a big bottle. Well, that's six, seven hundred dollars. The last thing you want to do is spend all that money on a bottle and then find out you actually can't use it to fill your air gun because you can't get your bottle filled. So make sure you have that sorted before you buy your bottle. Now let's say you just want to skip the bottle altogether and this really is my favorite option. Really, this is what I like to do and I just call it skip the tank and that is a personal compressor. Now this one here, this is the Omega Trail Charger. I really like this for a lot of reasons. One is 12 volt or 110, comes with a converter. So that's actually not that unique. All of the 12 volt compressors that I've seen pretty much do that. But what this one does better than the others is that can actually fill these small bottles till you're 4,500 PSI. Takes a good long time, but you're not gonna burn it up doing so, and that is awesome. So you can set your pressure here, whether you're direct filling your gun or you're filling your bottle, you dial in your pressure, you run the, you run the compressor, and it shuts off when it's done. Very, very cool, and it is water-cooled. Again, something I like now, the downside to water-cooled, uh, now you can put additives to prevent it from freezing, but if you're in a really super cold environment, that water-cooled thing may not be the best option for you, which is where we gotta start looking at something a little different in an air-cooled solution, which is right over here. We'll get to that in just a second. But in any case, this guy here, you're looking at a little over 800, about $850, but you skip the tank, so you're not spending four to seven hundred dollars on a tank. You just got this, and this thing will fill whatever gun you got. It'll just fill it, fill it, fill it. Just a great option. Go with the personal compressor. That's my choice, just to let you know. All right, let's say you want to fill a big bottle, or you want to have a bunch of little bottles you want to fill more quickly. That's where the day state comes into play, and it does come at a price. It's two thousand dollars. However, this is essentially a scuba compressor. This is a really nice unit, comes out of Italy, and it is just designed to run and run and run. That's what it's meant to do. This particular model is a 110 model and it fills relatively quickly. It is scaled down because it is 110. If you want more speed, you can go to the 220, it's a little bit more money, but you can really fill much more quickly. What's really nice about this is that it's air-cooled, it's very robust, and it's oil lubricated. So. This system will run and run and run. You do your regular service, change the oil like you're supposed to, and it does require special oil. So look at the manual. Don't go buy some generic oil off the shelf. It's got to be ISO 150, or you could burn the thing up. So you got to buy the right oil. It's super important. And make sure you change your filters like you're supposed to according to the manual. But what you're going to get out of this is very dry and very clean air to fill your bottle. The one thing this doesn't do is direct fill your gun. So this is set up to shut off automatically at 4,500 PSI. Now, could I plug that into my gun and watch it? Probably, but it also may fill very fast and it may actually be very hot for the gun, may not be best for your gun. So it's really best for this to fill your small bottle or your large bottle, and then you use that, take that out in the field and fill your air guns. So you've got a bunch of options here. You've got the hand pump, great utility. Every air gunner that shoots PCP needs to have that. Then it starts getting into some options, right? So do you want the bottle? Do you want the personal compressor? My choice, I go with the personal compressor. So I could fill my gun here in the shop. I could go out in the field. I could fill off my car battery, etc. I like the personal compressor. That's just me. Maybe you do want the bottle throw it in your backpack. You don't want to have to take anything with you but a backpack and a bottle. Well, that's where the bottles come into play. But if you need to fill your bottle, you've got an option like the day state here. Just a great compressor. So all of these options come together so you can go out and get some quality trigger time with your PCPR gun. Guys, that's it for now. My name's Rick Utzler. Thanks for watching.